Hello again, this is Josh Carr. I'd like to show you how one variable data tables work. A lot of people are used to the two variable data ta table thing, and uh, I thought I'd show you a one variable data table because it's tricky, and a lot of people don't know how to use it. And I know a lot of people who use two variable data tables that don't even know this exists. So I'd like to show you how it works. Okay, so we have some starter information. We're borrowing a certain amount of money. Here's $70,000. We're holding the building with a 30-year mortgage. We've got 6% interest rate. We have a payment. That's our monthly payment. Down here, we have some other basic information. We've made this investment. Maybe it's buying a piece of real estate. Maybe it's, I don't know, it could be anything, really. Uh, we're buying it for $100,000. We have an income of 10, some debt service, some cash flow after debt service. Income, I'm just growing at 3%. Debt service is the monthly times 12, monthly payment times 12. Cash flow after debt service is line 13 minus, minus line 14. And then it's sale. I'm selling it based on year six's NOI, uh, year six's net operating income, and I'm just using a 10% yield on that, 10% cap rate. Anyway, line 18, we've got a stream of cash flow. So here's the important part. We have some metrics at the bottom. We'd like to know our year one cash flow. We'd like to know our IRR. We'd like to know our net present value. In this case, we have a payment. The payment is driven by the interest rate. So here's the question. In the previous video, we varied two things. We varied the amortization schedule and the interest rate to see what the payment was. Maybe in this case, though, instead of wanting to do, say, amortization schedule and interest rate to get the payment, we want to vary one variable, say the interest rate, and see how it, how, how it forces the calculation, how it drives the calculation of multiple outputs, say the year one cash on cash, the internal rate of return, the net present value. So this is what you do. You build a single variable data table. I'm going to put in 5%, 5 5.5%, 6%, 6.5%, 7%. I'm then going to have some links to things I care about. Payment, IRR, I mean, sorry, cash on cash, IRR, NPV. And now that I have links to things I care about, I highlight the entire area. Now instead of having my formula, instead of having the thing I was trying to calculate in the upper left hand corner, I now have multiple things I'm trying to calculate along the top. The left side of course is still a bunch of just hard coded values. The top is a bunch of links. I highlight the area. I go to data, what if analysis, data table, the row input cell is blank. The column input cell is F, sorry, E8. Now this confuses people, the fact that the row input cell is blank. It's kind of a trick question. If you're used to two variable data tables, you give it two variables. In a one variable data table, when it says what's the input along the row, well the row does not consist of inputs. The row is just a bunch of formulas. So the row input cell is blank. The column input cell, that's E8, the interest rate. And now that I have it set up, I press OK. And after a moment, it calculates. And we can now see that it shows how does the payment vary as the interest rate changes, the year one cash on cash, the IRR, the net present value. Of course, you might want to format it to make it pretty. You might want to put some percentages on that. Two spaces after the decimal. I can make that dollars. You know, you can format it however it makes you happy. Uh, but the basic idea here again is I change one variable over range. I see what the outputs are. And I actually use this a lot more than two variable data tables. I often am trying to see how as I change one thing, say, <clears throat> the purchase price of buying an asset, the rent, the interest rate, how does it affect multiple outcomes? Um, that's pretty much it. That's a one variable data table. <clears throat> In the next and final video,
I'll talk about some issues that come up when building data tables in general, and hopefully you found this useful. Thank you.